Best show, hi. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Secretary of Commerce, Will Ross. Okay, that's pretty good. It's really good, don't you think? Yeah, no, that was good. I mean, I mean, he's. Have you seen this guy? Wilbur Ross. No, no. I mean, he's the Secretary of, of Commerce. He he's eighty, but he looks like he's I don't know uh, deceased. Okay. That's how. That's the energy level. You know how Trump's always saying that that everyone has low energy. Mm-hmm. This guy has has negative energy. So he actually siphons off other people's energy to keep exactly, them going. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I just, uh, it's hard It's hard with these old timers. Right. Can I do one more? Yeah, yeah, keep going. With musical guest, Stu Cook. <laughs> Stu, Stu Cook from Creedence Clearwater Revival. The bassist, solo, doing a, uh, two solo songs. Just, uh, I'm picturing just bass and vocals. Yes. Like, he didn't even put together, he didn't even get a guitarist and a drummer. He might not even been able to get any. Yeah. Like, he had feelers out, but there were no takers. People are, yeah, people are passing on being on SNL. Exactly. Uh, uh, Stu, yeah, I'm going to pass on that. Like, not not even I have something else going on, it's just I'm passing. (laughs) Like, they wouldn't even make up the lie no. that he no. knows is a lie. Right. They're just like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Let me do one more. Yeah, go ahead. With a special stand-up set by Steve Carlton. That's a Philly's uh, pitcher? Yeah, see, he, I, see he, he's like a, a noted crotchety weirdo. So he'd go on the show... I'm picturing in in his Phillies uniform. Yes, but he, he was also known for wearing these giant fur coats, too. So would he come out in the fur coat? He had the fur coat over the vintage 70s, you know, like the tight uniform. Like the light blue? <laughs> yes, the away, the away uniform with, what do they call those, stirrups? Is that what those are, like the sock things? Yeah, like a sock garter or something yeah. that they had on. Yeah. Yeah. I liked when the when that one when the the pirates wore shorts. Do you remember? Yes. The White Sox did too. I think. I yes. think it might have been the White. Where they're just like, let's wear shorts. Yes. Like, there's a funny story mm-hmm. that that has been verified. Uh, one of the guys on the I think on the White Sox, he was he, he was voted uh, into uh, the the All Star game. Mm-hmm. And somehow his uniform didn't make it to the game, so he had no uniform. So he went to the the concession stand. Remember back then they they would sell uniforms to kids. Yeah. And somehow he was able to buy a White Sox uniform that fit him mm-hmm. somehow, and he wore that to the game. He it's wore true. he wore a uniform that he bought out in the at the at a merch yes. uh, stand. Dan, Dan Epstein has verified this. The writer. Okay. Well, that's so, well, that's a lot of baseball. Uh, a lot of knowledge stuff. coming here. Hey, I do. I recognize your voice, right? Do I know you? Well, you should. Okay. Well, who who is this? It's Nick, Nick. Betty's husband. Mm. Ugh. Okay. Hey, Nick. Um, How's it going? Oh, it's good. Um. Well, I guess I should say I, you, people don't know you, people listening, and it's like, you know, my my longtime friend uh, Betty is married to you. You're, you're her new husband, Nick. That's right. So how, how's it going, Nick? Well, to be honest, um, I'm a little miffed. Yeah. Okay. I saw this coming. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure this is about the party the other night, right? Of course it is. Mm-hmm. I have one question for you. Yeah? Would it have killed you to sit in that chair for more than 15 seconds? 
Hey, Nick, you know, look. I know you're so proud of your super expensive stereo system and that you've got this chair that you have mathematically positioned to give the listener the optimal, the absolute greatest experience possible. But I just have to say it felt weird to be sitting there in front of like 30 people at at a party while you're hovering around me to boot. Well, I I just wanted to make sure you were properly enjoying Peter Gabriel's So album. And, you know, of, of all the guests I had there, I thought you'd be the one who would appreciate the chair most because Betty's always telling me how much you love music and you, it's all you talk yeah, about okay. is music. Look, I like music. I love music. Yes. But I, I don't, I, I don't want to be looked at while I'm listening to it. You know, and I really don't like being filmed while I'm listening to it. Well, I need content from my Tales from the Audio Chair blog. And, you know, truthfully, you are by far the biggest FP to ever sit in that chair. And you didn't even sit there long enough for me to get footage. Mm-hmm. You know, you didn't even make it to the first course of Red Raid before you got up and said you had to go to the toity. Yeah, I just, it's the whole thing felt weird. It felt way too weird. For, for what I had expected out of what's supposed to be just a, a party. Well, you felt weird. I felt really embarrassed. And I'll tell you, I, I paid Heinrich, the audio guru, 13 grand for that system and an additional four grand for that chair. And then you disrespected me by bolting after 20 seconds. How am I supposed to feel about that? Mm-hmm. Well, you know... Look, I, I'm sorry if I came off however I came off, but it's like there's just an energy that was coming off of you, Nick, that was just so like it was like ma- manic energy, like like ba- like bad energy, like people would you'd get people to sit in the chair. Right. And they're sitting there and you're they're sitting. They're not even in the thing for 30 seconds before you're like skipping through to another track. And you're you're staring at them, and you're I guess you were filming them also, and then well, you're, yeah, and then you're berating them if they don't seem to be getting it the way you uh, want them to get it, not hearing what you want them to be hearing. Well, I wish you'd been in the room when when I I, I played uh, like forty seconds of Giant Steps for Tammy, and she was just looking at me like like she didn't know what she was hearing. What kind mm-hmm. of idiot is that? But if somebody's sitting there, maybe they don't know jazz, uh, or it's not their thing. And but how are they ever going to appreciate it if you're staring at them while they're trying to take it in? I wasn't just staring. At one point, I shoved Mike's face in that Avalon album. Uh huh. To look at the cover of yes, the- understand yeah. it. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a great vibe. Nick, you know, you know, and and then to add insult to injury, you didn't come back in when I took off Texas flood and I put on synchronicity. Uh huh. Okay. Well, uh, let me. I'm not even going to. Uh, you said you, to add what to injury? Insult. It's it. it okay. Yeah. I'm, what do you think it is? It's insult. So. No, it's not. It's insult. Have you ever heard heard that that? No, when someone when someone scrapes when you were a kid didn't didn't like if you scraped your your knee, your mother would would uh, she would say lay there while I don't get salt to put mm-hmm. in your wound. I'm getting something else, something that'll heal it. To get in, okay, sure. I maybe I had a different upbringing than you did with that stuff, but why would and, you? And the saltiest. The worst part of, of of the of the container of salt was always the bottom, the end salt. Mm-hmm, that's sure. that's what stung most. Well, what I okay, so that's the worst. Why would you think that a Stevie Ray Vaughan album, like, like you took that off and then you put on a Police record? Yeah, 
And you'd think that that would bring me back in? I thought it would. Uh-huh. Why, why would you think that would draw me back in? Well, because Betty said that you really like punk rock, and that's the only punk rock album I have. Synchro- the Police Synchronicity. Yeah. It's not exactly punk. Are rock. you kidding? Synchronicity Part 2? That's, like spe- that's like speed metal almost. Yeah, almost. <laughs> almost. Okay, well, I, I, I guess I, I should have played uh, Cargo. Men at Work? Yeah. Why, is that punk also? Yeah. That's, okay. Glass Houses? Billy, J- no, that's not. You think that these, this is like punk to you? You're going to get it? You're going to get it. Who's that now? Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. That's right. You're Yeah. These are Mirrors not, by Blue Oyster Cult? <laughs> these are not punk albums. Fables of the Reconstruction. <laughs> That's, no, R.E.M. were not punk. The Lexicon of Love. <laughs> ABC, the first ABC album. Mm-hmm. Mighty yeah. Like a Rose? <laughs> that's like, that's when Elvis Costello was like, like, I'm going to have a beard now. Along the Red Ledge. I don't remember what that is. That's Hall and Oates. <laughs> it's, this is not. This is not punk, Nick. New traditionalists. Wait, what is that? Devo. Oh, it's Devo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cr- crack Jake Fogel this much? It don't sound like you do. I, I don't actually. I don't, would not crack him. All right. Uh, infidels. Infidels. Who's that Bob, again? Bob Dylan. <laughs> This is not a punk. This is not punk. Fly on the wall. ACDC? Yes. Well, that's actually... Have you seen the cover? It's a... It's like an outhouse or something, right? Yes. I'm sorry. That's their country record, then. (laughs) Like, I... I I think they they had... Clearly, at some point, they changed graphic designers. I think so. (laughs) Because they went from... Back from Back in Black, which was this black album, like, mm-hmm. and then they had for those about to rock, which is a, a canon, both embossed, <laughs> both too. embossed, and then after that, then they went to a black, a flick of the switch was probably the next one. Yeah, the pencil <laughs> sketch of, of of a little boy hanging from a a a, 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 a switch. Yeah, so they went and they got they had a pencil sketch on the as their next. Clearly, somebody was cutting corners somewhere. <laughs> Could be. Then, then the one after that was like a cartoonish, like a knot hole, like a peak hole in it. It looked like like an like the kind of thing you'd see a, a, for sale at like Cracker Barrel. Yeah, like a, like it would be like a thing you'd hang in a. Like a like a like a country bathroom they mm-hmm. would sell to like if you needed wall art for a country bathroom. Right. Well, the word is it was originally titled "Country Bathroom." That that was the name of that album. The new album from ACDC is "Country Bathroom." <laughs> that would be. I wish I'd buy that, it. You'd buy. You'd buy a country bathroom. I would. I sure would. Yeah. But, you know, I'm still really miffed. What are you miffed about? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm miffed about another layer of Saturday Night. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What? Well, would it have killed you to at least feign interest in my movie and TV memorabilia room? Oh, Nick, I, I don't want to go anywhere near this. I think we should. No, I don't Let's want to. Let's get it out. If, no. if you and me... Uh-huh. And Betty are going to be friends. We got to hash this out. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So what Look, do you think? What's the? What? Why are you miffed again? Well, I think you should just come clean and admit you're jealous. Okay. I'm jealous. Of... Yes. Go ahead. Why, okay, why well, am I jealous? I I know you're struggling to break into show business, and it's probably really annoying to you that this realtor who you think is so uncool, has all this great movie and TV memorabilia, and there you are trying to get spec scripts to John Ross Bowie. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, well, I, I like John. I, actually, he's a g- good guy. I, 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 I do, too. Yeah. I, I was a, 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 a big naked babies booster. Uh-huh. Oh, you were you were a naked babies booster? Oh, yeah. Did you have that on a shirt or something? I did, yeah. <laughs> NBB. Yep. Yeah. No, but, row every time. Look, my business with John Ross Bowie or or is or isn't any of your business. Okay, fair enough. And if he doesn't open the envelopes I send him or does open them, that's between me and him. Uh, fair enough. You know, and look, I don't think you're uncool, Nick. Please. I, I saw you roll your eyes when I said, but a book, but a boom. Yeah, because it's a corny commercial. It's then that line is so played out. I love that line. I can't wait for that commercial to come on. Uh huh. So you get you get pumped when that commercial comes. I on. do. I start doing push ups. Uh huh. Sometimes chin ups. Do you have yeah. a chin up bar? Do it? No, I don't. No. Got to get one. Yeah. Got to get one. I can do two. You can do two. Yes. Yeah. Chin up bars always seemed to. It either seemed like they broke the door mold. They or always ninety percent of, of of the time they break the door. Yeah, they did not seem. And then I guess it's just assuming it can't be a doorway with a door, right? Cause right, it, it's an entryway at that point, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So I guess it, it, it has to be a frat house. Then you can put one in. Yes. Oh, I long for my frat days. You miss your frat days. I do. I miss my frat brothers. Mm-hmm. They're all in jail. Yeah. They took it too far. Uh huh. So I did too, truthfully, but I I, I ran away. You that ran, night. Yeah. Well, look, you got away from them, and now look at you. You you're gotta a, run, right? You're, you're a realtor with a cool stereo system and a memorabilia uh, a, me, a memorabilia room. We well, speaking of, what didn't you like about my collectibles? Uh huh. Honestly, yes. The stuff you had, especially for the amount of talking you did... I hyped it quite a bit. It's... It was not A-level stuff. It was a strange... It fell into a strange spot of being close to exciting without being actually exciting, the things you had. Close to exciting? Are you crazy? Yeah. Yeah. You're out of your mind. All my stuff is top shelf. Like like what? Well, like the pencil that Richard Mulligan was doodling with when he was stuck on the phone waiting for customer service in episode 21 of Empty Nest. Uh-huh. That, that was great, do you think? The pencil from Empty Nest. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, how about the glass that uh, Stanley Tucci was sipping from in the great Spielberg Hanks film Terminal? Of course, everyone loves... Stanley Tucci as uh, airport official Frank Dixon in that film. From the term, yeah, okay. Um, okay, you had a glass that Stanley Tucci drank out of. Okay. Um, Matthew Broderick's belt from the movie Tower Heist. It's in like four scenes. His belt? Yes. But he's not, he's not, just correct me if I'm wrong, Is he? he's not whipping it around the room or anything. No, not in anything that made it into the movie. There's there's a a rumored uh, scene that that landed on the cutting room floor of of, of him having like a, a a whipping contest with somebody. But in the movie that any of us could see, it's just a belt through his belt loops on his. Unfortunately, belt. yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Well, you're not impressed by that. Um, there's no way you weren't blown away by the roll of masking tape that I had that was used on the set of The Price Is Right. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, and not during the Drew Carey run. Okay, this this was Barker tape, the good stuff. Uh huh. So a roll of masking tape that was on on the prices right when Bob Barker was the host. Yes, I can't verify that he touched it. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, um, how about the Julia Louis Dreyfus raincoat from the famous Rain episode of the New Adventures of Old Christine? I, the raincoat, yeah. It, I mean, okay, it's a raincoat. It's a raincoat from a right. from her la, one of her her third most popular show. Oh, that could definitely be debated all night. Well, there's Veep, right? Then there's Seinfeld. Yeah. 
it's okay. Oh, so you're saying New Adventures of Old Christine is more popular than Seinfeld? I'd rank that first, then Veep, then uh, Steinfeld. Okay. Yeah. Steinfeld, not Steinfeld. Okay. Well, well. Uh, then what else? Do I, what else do I have? Uh, oh, uh, the briefcase from Pulp Fiction. Yes, that's impressive. That that one's impressive. Oh, you know what? I don't think you were in the room when I explained that it, it, it's not the briefcase that Samuel L. Jackson and Travolta have. It, it's a briefcase that you can see in the background of that scene at the ice cream shop. It, it's on a shelf. I, I guess it was like part of like their lost and found section. Maybe oh, someone came so, in and got some ice cream so, and then left their briefcase. Yeah, so it's a... Okay, so it's a briefcase that doesn't even... It's not the briefcase. It's a briefcase. From, yeah. So maybe you need to stop saying it's the briefcase from Pulp Fiction and say it's a briefcase well, from Pulp Fiction. That kind of that doesn't that doesn't punch as well. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. All right. I, I also have Bud Abbott's shoe. What's that? Bud Abbott's shoe. Bud Abbott from Abbott and Costello. Yes. You yeah. have his shoes. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not sure which movie it's uh, from or, or if, it, if it was even in a movie, uh-huh. but I definitely have his left shoe. Oh, so you don't even have the pair of shoes. I don't, no. Okay. So you have Bud Abbott's left shoe. I do, yeah. And it's one of those shoes that an elderly person has, so it's okay. probably not in a movie. It was probably after the fact. It's like an orthopedic shoe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if he was wearing orthopedic shoes he might when, have been. when they were filming those movies. It's possible, like his last one, which I guess was in the 80s. It was not. He was not making movies in the 80s. We could, uh, I wish my computer worked. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could look it up, but it's not working right now. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, you know what? What? Let's get this out of the open, too, all right? I, I don't think I didn't see you snickering at my bro-dozer as you walked up the driveway, okay? Your bro-dozer? Yeah. Which I'm assuming is the yellow Hummer. Mm-hmm. Is it dro- yeah, then, you know what? To be honest, I was snickering. See, I knew it. Uh-huh. I, I mean, how, how, how can you even drive that thing? Are you kidding? It, it commands total respect and conveys awesome power. A, a Bloated yellow Hummer. It's sleek. Uh-huh. Large and sleek. Uh, and I'll tell you, man, when I drive that thing up, uh-huh. kids flee. Yeah, I'm sure they flee. They're terrified. Yeah. And I, I, Kids flee. Men salute. I've had, like, at least 15 servicemen salute me as I oh, drive so, up. Oh, so servicemen salute you. Oh, yeah. Just because you're driving a Hummer. Yep. They salute you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I'll tell you what else. I've, I've had a couple uh, tube tops get taken down, too. Because people get so, what, so are turned on? Right, yeah. I don't want to say it. You said it. Yeah, well, I'm because I don't believe it is why I'm saying it. Well, get ready to believe it because uh-huh. it's true. Wow. Well, that's, I... that's a great slogan. I think Trump should use that. Get ready to believe it because it's true. That's actually very good. You, what do you think is going on in his stomach at, like, 90% of the time? Like, what sound do I think is going yes, on? Yes, yeah. I think it probably sounds something like this. Yes, yeah, stop! <laughs> like somebody just, yeah, just asking for, for a reprieve. Please stop! Please stop! No, no more fish fillets! <laughs> yes. And then a, fl- a fish fillet hits the person in the head then, because here comes another one. <laughs> what do you think is the shortest amount of time he's gone between the last bite of a fish fillet and the first bite of a Sunday? The shortest I, I amount of time? I think you can do it time? in one motion. Yeah, I, I would bet that it's almost he's even alternated at points. He just started on the Sunday before he was done with the fish fillet, and then just Sunday walked. first, yes, yeah. And, but then he'll go, he'll go fit one bite, one bite, one bite, like one bite of the fish fillet, one bite of the Sunday, one bite of the fish fillet, one bite of the Sunday. Do you think he says it too? Like, like one one bite of that, one bite of that. Probably, yeah. I I could see him. I could see him saying it. I love it. Or seeing him just even go like you're at you're you're done. Mm-hmm. Like, 
no, the no, final bite. Like oh, no. Thing. What? What the? What's, oh, no. What? Um, what's going oh, on? Oh, jeez. Um, what? Well, you know, after you humiliated me by leaving the audio chair, I installed leg and arm restraints that automatically engage when a listener sits in the chair. Yeah. And the straps don't disengage until a song is completed. All right. Well, that's very weird and very unfair and probably illegal, I guess, also. Well, speaking of weird and unfair, yeah. I, I just sat down in the chair and the straps engaged. And I, I thought I had this thing set on manual. And I can't. I can't get it to disengage. So you're strapped in the chair now. Yes, I'm strapped in. Your arms and legs? I can't move. I can't... Well, I can't get... You can't get help. free. Oh, no. Wait, what is that? It's playing gaucho, Tom. That's some quality audio. You can't argue with this uh, this quality, right? No, I can hear that that soprano sax is pretty. This is their punk album. Gaucho. Oh no! Wait, what is that? Oh, oh no! What? I, I had a, I had the stereo cranked too high. Heinrich told me this might happen, and the stereo blew, it blew up. Your stereo blew up, but what does that sound now I hear? That's fire! So you're but you're still strapped I'm to the... I'm strapped in! Tom, you you got to call the New Bridge Rescue Department. I, I don't actually need the search and rescue department because, well, you know where I am, so you can just tell them to come to my house. Well, look, I would... I would call for help, but I have to just say my phone has been really weird since the weekend. It's been operating like at like one sixteenth of its normal no. speed. No. Oh, you know why? Why? That's because I I uploaded a bunch of high res audio files onto your phone that I I bought from Heinrich, and I'll tell you those files make Pono files look like MP ones. It, so you installed stuff on my phone to to why to slow it down? No, I wanted you to hear how how good audio could sound. All oh, the straps are getting tighter. Oh no! You know, I, I I think if I'm correct, you should have the entire Barking Pumpkin catalog on on your phone right now. I didn't look, and uh, well, let me look. Oh yeah, there it is. Wow. Okay. A lot of good stuff. Yes, your guitar is in there. It's a lot of it's a lot of stuff on here. Oh no, it blew up again! Oh, Tom, hurry, please call! This is like if Christine was a high fidelity lounge chair. Okay, I'll hurry. try. Let's, I'll try to give you some help, Nick. Nick? Nick? Oh no. Oh no. Poor Nick. I don't know, man. That might be the end of Nick. I guess that's a thing. Nick has a thing. Mike has a like. Mike used to hang out in some dude's apart. Uh, was it a house? Not an apartment. I guess is that a thing of dudes just cranking stereos? Well, I'll put you in touch with Nick, Mike. Called audio files. Okay. All right. Well, I think they're, well, the stereo blew up. So I don't think I was going to say you should go over and check his out. I don't think he's, you know, we might not be hearing a whole lot from him.